here with another video and today we want to talk about the chain rule guys so far we have covered the power rule we covered the product rule and the quotient rule and now we are ready to actually talk about the chain rule guys the chain rule is a little more complicated or a little more complex than the other rules but we still need other rules in order to actually do something with the chain rule guys i'm going to try to illustrate this using some simple examples and then we will like kind of establish the chain rule once we establish the chain rule then we will start actually using the chain rule to evaluate uh, derivatives for many different types of functions so guys at the same time i am going to show you the method that the textbooks usually like to use most of the textbooks but i'm also going to show you my way of like a shortcut way of doing using the chain rule as well so the example that i want to use here is like i'm going to start with a simple example so let us say we have a, something like a function f of x is x square plus one whole square so you what you will see uh, with these uh, functions where one has to use the chain rule they usually are like composite functions or a composition of functions which means there is more than one function that we can see with these functions like as you can see here there's this x squared plus one but then there's a squaring function here but this whole thing is also squared so uh, i hope that you already know and you already have some understanding of the composition of functions like f compo uh, f of g and g of f of x and all those things so guys uh, let us say this is the function and if we try to find the derivative of this function now in order to find the derivative of this function uh, what way one can do is and i'm not going to do this whole thing here but guys what one can do is one can rewrite this as x squared plus one at this point because we don't have the we, do, we have not established the chain rule so we got to go back and use the rules and use the methods that we know so if we have to do it right now without knowing the chain rule one would actually write it out as the product of two right and then uh, you would use the product rule on this this is f and this is g and one you will use the product rule on that so guys once we use the product rule on this finally this is what we are going to get as the derivative and i'm right now i'm writing it in a in a, in a in a certain form so that we can see the pattern here but then finally if you have to write the final answer we would simplify things okay but right now i'm just writing it so that we can see the the pattern so it's going to look like this two times x squared plus one raised to the power one and then times two x okay guys if i have to actually write the final answer what i'm going to do is i'm going to do two times two four x and then i have x squared plus one but i'm i want to see some pattern here that's why i'm leaving it like this so guys let us keep this in mind I think I need a better marker here. Okay, so guys, I have this one. Now let us move on to a different function. Let us say now I have x squared plus one to the power three. Guys, again, we have not established the chain rule. So if I have to do something like, like this, what I will do is, one of the ways is to kind of, again, rewrite this as x squared plus one times x squared plus one whole square. Why am I breaking it like this? Because we can find, we can treat this as f, this as g. Uh, we can easily find the derivative of this function and derivative of this function we have already established here so we can use those combination of this and the power rule and the product rule and finally get the final uh, derivative of this whole function and once we do that guys this is what we are going to get uh, we are going to get 3 x squared plus 1 raised to the power 2 and then we are still going to get times 2x okay guys let us keep this in box as well because these are the key things or key terms that we want to look at and establish the chain rule similarly guys let us go one step further if i uh, if i look at the f of x equals to x squared plus one to the power four and again if i break it down and then finally if i get the right the final derivative so guys uh, you can break it down like this x squared plus one squared times x squared plus one whole square or you can do cube times x squared plus one it's up to you there's few different ways but all those ways uh, require the product rule and uh, also the power rule guys finally this is what i get uh, I get 4 and then I get x squared plus 1 whole cube and then I still get times 2x so if you want you can try x squared plus 1 to the power 5 and 6 and 7 or whatever you will still get a 2x all the way at the end now let us just focus on guys let us just focus on these things in the boxes so in the boxes what I see here is that this 2x is repeating every time right and then this 2 right there's a 2 here and there's a two here as well right so it seems like you have we have this two up front and then what is happening here guys with the exponent again if you look at the exponent here it seems like we have subtracted one from the original exponent right let us see if the same thing is happening in the other cases or other examples as well 
If I look at this cubic function here, guys, I'm bringing that three up front like I did in this case, and then I'm reducing that three by one, okay? Same thing I did here. Let us also check it for the x to the, the fourth power. Again, I'm bringing four down here, and then I'm reducing it by one, right? And then I see this two x showing up every time I try to find the derivative of this function. So guys, I think we can see a pattern and let me kind of write down what that pattern actually is. So guys, my way of thinking about this is a little bit slightly different than you, that you might find on the, in the textbooks. So how I like to think about this is, uh, so I, have, I, I like to think of this function or you can take up, take up any of these functions. It's like a combination of two or composition of two. So it's f of g of x which is, you already know, it's a composition function. And then in this case, if I'm looking at this particular function, let us, let us look at, let us focus on uh, x squared plus one. So I can treat g of x as x squared plus one, and I can treat f of x as x to the power four. Guys, I'm, I'm talking about this particular function, okay? And we can do that with any of those other functions, but we're just illustrating with this example, but we already saw a pattern. Then guys, what is what we can see here is, if I have to take the derivative of this composition function, f of g of x, and guys, you can verify, you can easily verify that if you use f of g of x, what you are gonna get is x squared plus one raised to the power four. That is something you guys can do on your own. What I'm trying to see here, or what I'm trying to establish here is that if we have to take the derivative of this, what is happening guys, what is happening here, let us look at this carefully. It seems like we are multiplying by two x every time, but if you look at the, original functions, it seems like 2x is nothing but the derivative of this piece inside the parentheses, right? Look at this piece inside the parentheses and this and this. 2x is just the derivative of that function. So we can easily say that it is the derivative of that inner function. And you can think of that g of x as the inner function. And this, I like to think of that as the inner function. And then guys, outside here, I just have an f prime of g of x. It's the derivative of the f function, which depends on g of x. So guys, that is something I like to think uh, slightly differently than what the textbooks usually like try to illustrate. The idea is still the same, but this is guys, this is how I like to make it easier for myself. So when I look at this guy and this guy and this guy, forget about 2x, we already know what 2x is, the derivative of the inner, what is inside the parentheses. Guys, what I think about, what I think about this is like I treat this function, it can be as complicated as x squared plus one or it can be as complicated as anything, guys. It can have so many different terms and radicals and whatnot, okay? I think of that as just x to the power n. So I'm thinking about this whole thing as just x, okay? And it's x to the power n. Whenever you have something of the form x to the power n, which rule do we use to find the derivative? It is just the simple power rule. So using the power rule, what do we do? It's n. So let me remind, let me, let me remind everyone what is the power rule. For x to the power n, the power rule says the derivative is n x to the power n minus one. So guys, when I think about this or when I treat this whole thing as an as an x and there's an x squared. How am I going to find the power? Uh, how am I going to find the derivative using the power rule? I bring the exp the exponent in the front, which I we did here, and then this whole thing raised to the power n minus one. Isn't that exactly what is happening here, guys? Look at this here. Again, I'm treating this whole thing as x, and this is x to the power three. What is the derivative? You bring the three up front, and instead of x only x, it is just x squared plus one. So you got to write the whole x squared plus one, guys. Same thing happens here. So what is basically happening? Guys, if we try to understand this particular, this is the chain rule, by the way, this is the chain rule. So what is, what is really happening here? First, we are taking the derivative of the outer function. Okay, we're taking the derivative of the outer function. And guys, most of the times, if we are dealing with an algebraic functions, you are gonna treat them like using like a power rule, x to the power n type of a function. That is the first thing that we do here. But that is not the only thing one has to do here because it is not just one function. It's a composition, combination of one or two or three or more functions. So what one has to do is one has to multiply. One has to multiply. That is the, that is the most critical piece step here. One has to multiply by the derivative of the inner. And in this case, this is the derivative of this piece and this piece and this piece. Now guys, once we start doing a lot of more examples, there sometimes we may have to multiply by uh, twice by the derivative of the inner, there may be like 
So in this case, it's like a composition of two functions. As you can see here, I can just get this function x squared plus one raised to the power four just by composing f and g. G is this and f is this. But we may have to work with functions where we may need three functions or four functions and then we compose them to get the original function. So in that case, one has to like, let us say there's three functions that one needs to compose to get a final function. So in that case, one has to do multiply by the derivative of the inner twice because there's three functions going on, right? So again, if there's four, then one has to multiply three times. So that guys, that depends on a particular example. And I'm gonna show you those examples where one may have to multiply more than once, like one may have to multiply the derivative of the inner and then there's one more. So I will show you those in examples. But guys, right now, all I want you guys to understand is when you have a composition function, what we have to do is we have to treat this as x to the power n type, depending on if it's algebraic. So far, we are looking only at algebraic functions. And then we use the power rule for that. Finally, we do that, then we have to treat uh, multiply that by the derivative of the inner again for derivative of the inner in case of the algebraic functions we still use the power rule okay so guys for x for the square and cube and four we may still be able to write it out as a product and do it but let think about if i have to the power 100 then it does not make any sense for us to use the product rule then at that time one has to use and one has to rely on something different which in this case is going to be the chain rule we're going to use the chain rule Guys, this is one of the ways of thinking about the chain rule and using the chain rule to solve and simplify things. Guys, there's one more way that the textbooks usually like to talk about it. I also like, like to discuss and think about the, uh, that type. So I'm also going to show you uh, that method as well. And then you will have maybe two methods for you to like choose and see which one you like more. So guys, the other way of thinking about this is if you think in terms of the dy over dx type of a notation. So... Um, with the composition function, and we are, again, we are confining it to only two functions. We, it, it is also going to work for more than two functions. So let us say we have a function y, which is, uh, which is, uh, which depends on, which is a function of u, okay? And then I have this u, which in turn depends on uh, function x, okay? So here I'm considering two functions, guys, we can extend it to more than two. Now, if I have to find the dy over dx, Right? That means we have to find the derivative of this y with respect to x. So in order to find the derivative of y with respect to x, we cannot accomplish this goal just in one step. One has to use maybe like two steps in this case because there's composition of two functions. So how we can usually like understand this using the chain rule. So using the chain rule, it's exactly what we did here with this whole example and then using the primes and all that. Guys, what we can do here is we can first find the derivative of y with respect to u right because this is a and let me use a different color here so we can first find the derivative of y with respect to u because y first of all y is uh, depends on u and then guys we can multiply this by the derivative of this u with respect to the dx so you can see here although guys keep in mind these are not like ratios like regular re regular ratios that you can cross out but Still intuitively behind the scenes, what is happening, this, this du and du in a way is just canceling out, right? Not like the ratio is crossing out, but still it is like kind of canceling out if you just want to understand how it's working right now. So it's just crossing out, canceling out, and then what you get is dy over dx. So what does that mean? Guys, it still means the same thing as we have explained here through with this uh, prime notation. This du over dx is kind of, or I mean, it is basically the derivative of the inner and then this is the derivative of the outer and you got to multiply them and that is exactly what we are doing here as well so some people just prefer to use this this notation and this way of evaluating the uh, derivative of functions using the chain rule and others just prefer this method guys i like both the methods but most of the times i prefer using this method and i have my own shortcut techniques of doing it which i kind of already uh, share with you i treat this as an x to the power n form and i use the power rule first and then I multiply by the derivative of the inner, okay? So guys, this is what one needs when one has to deal with more complex or composition of functions. Uh, but if you have a simple functions or product or quotient, we are still gonna use the other rules that we have learned. But now what's gonna happen guys, once we introduce the chain rule, now we may have to use the chain rule and a combination of product or quotient. And of course, we always have to use the power rule. So guys, uh, we already had some warm up with the product rule and quotient rule and power rule examples. 
in this section, I'm still going to start with simpler ones, but guys, then we are going to look at some more challenging uh, problems. And I mean, it is going to be interesting and it, is, it should be fun and interesting to actually look at some of the challenging problems. So guys, till then, take some notes on this. And uh, if you don't, we don't understand everything from, from, from this notation business and all that, guys, it is going to make more sense once I start actually doing examples. I promise you I'm going to make more sense out of this once we start applying it to some particular examples. Till then, guys, take care. I will